How y'all doing? For this review, I'm going to go over to book eight of the Barsoom series by Edgar Rice Burroughs. That is the Swords of Mars. And now we're back to John Carter being the protagonist again. <clears throat> so the story is that John Carter is now trying to find his way to um, cut down the assassins that's common among Barsoom. Um, <clears throat> assassination is one of the common means of death for special among high nobles, and especially in the in the in the city of Zadanga, where it was one of one of the rival cities he had deal with when the beginning of the series and there's a very pro a very um um good sized thieves uh, thieves i'm sorry assassins guild there and one of the things carter is no he's been sending out agents out there to try and take out the assassins cut them down um and put a mar special mark on their chest to show that it was john carter that helped you know john carter's means of taking him out not necessarily himself but his agents and his means of cutting down the assassins so he goes to zandanga and tries to seek out the um, assassins guild and tries to alleviate them in disguise as a red man and going under a different alias, he finds his way through. He finds a guy whom he contacts with a very, um, um, un, you know, a, a very um, suspicious-looking character. His name's um, Rapaz the Ulcio, or the Rat, as Ulcios are called. And the ta he takes him to a guy named False Falselvas, if I recall correctly. Um, I may have mispronounced that one, but um, but it was is this um, Falsivus? Sorry. Falsivus is a scientist there, you know, he takes you know, Carter on his wing as his bodyguard, and he, um, again, not knowing that it's John Carter, he's trying to, he relays to him that, you know, the Assassin's Guild is after him, because he hires assassins of his own outside the guild, and they don't like that, and not to mention, it's found out that Falsivus is a scientist, but he steals the ideas of other scientists and makes it his own, as well as his own experiments. And one of the things is he has a rival scientist who is building on the same thing he is, a ship with a, a, a computer with its own a, a synthetic brain. And that could, you know, listens to your thought patterns and it could go on its own. He's using this not just to travel around at high speeds across Barsoom, but also other planets. He wants to gain his fame and fortune as a, for scientific endeavors through that. But the Assassin's Guild, who's working with his rival scientists, are trying to stop, you know, stop them on this. So Carter has been trying to um, find out about the Assassin's Guild in the Zadanga and the leaders. And while attempting to thwart some of the Assassin's attempt on his life, he um, puts his mark on theirs after he defeats them. Eventually, the Assassin's Guild finds out that Carter's agents are working, you know, are trying to stop him. So they are making a plan to get Deja Thoris kidnapped and taken on the Falsus's rival ship to you know to in, to the, one of the moons of Mars we call it um oh what was um uh, Thuria but you know they call it Thuria we call it Phobos so it's one of the moons of Mars and they're offering a very high ransom for a return if you know in John Carter's cooperation having heard about this he tries to thwart him you know but he he tries to go back to helium. He they kidnap her, so he gets one of his own um, a soldiers there. I think it's um, Jat Or, and eventually he befriends one of the slaves of Falcibus, whose name is um, Zonda. Zonda, she is a slave, but she's there because of all the events of John Carter leading his army against um, uh, against the Danga through his earlier adventures, and that because of the fall of her family, she's now alone and hates John Carter, even though she's. A slave for John, you know, working under John Carter. So he's got that, you know, he kind of he finds it funny, but uh, he he's got he may have that potential problem. So now that they now that Assassin's Guild has kidnapped Dejo Thoris and taken her to um, Thuria, he's got to find a way to use Falcivis's ship to get there as well. So eventually he does. He um, you know hijacks a ship and then they go over to um, to Thuria. At first, he figures since he's going on a smaller world, he'd be much stronger there. But there's, they explain this weird theory that they have that as they approach this um, the moon, they will actually shrink in size, so it'll be more proportioned strength than what they were on a planet of the similar size that they're used to. So, and it's a weird one, but apparently it takes effect because as they go there, um, Thuria is its own little world, has its own forest. They come across this one um, building. You know, I'm sorry, not building, but you know, it's his own palace, and the inhabitants there are these pale-skinned, blue-haired um, beings who inhabited you know, sun worshippers. They're going to use them as sacrifice. The only problem is, you know, for Carter, he can't fight them off because they have this mental ability to make him invisible. So he captures him and his companions. They put them in separate rooms, and 
Carter comes across another being there, he, what they call the, the Catman of Mars. Even though they don't look like cats, it's based on the sound that they make. I, if I recall, it has a purring sound. The visual appearance is a humanoid being with two mouths, one smaller than the other, and, a, and one eye. He was a fellow prisoner, but you know he befriends him, starts to learn the language as they could, and ha and he and it also explains how they can counteract that visibility uh, with a little mental practice. And eventually, they find a way to escape. They go to another. Um, they try and track down the assassin and the scientist who kidnapped Dejo Thoris. Uh, eventually, the assassin has now been betrayed by the scientist, and now is you know. And, and I'm, I'm kind of spoiling, but it is kind of you know, he does sort of hook up with John Carter, renounces his ways and everything, because now he's after the rival scientists. That's also rival Falcibus. So it's now a chase of so, um, going across this other new. This is the first time they ever travel off planet to their adventures, and you know, to try for John Carter to rescue his wife, and will he succeed? How will he do it? The ending, typical Edgar Rice Burroughs is. Pretty fast. Once you get right near at the end, he's like, yeah. Normally, if you come to this point, you expect it to last a little further in today's novels. No, this one is like one or two chapters and just bam, bam, and it ends. But it ends, you know, in a satisfying way, kind of like a television series and all that. So, there it is. The Swords of Mars. John Carter returns as the main protagonist, and you know, it's the first time they travel through another off world to the to the moons of Mars. They see all the habitants there. It's a nice, good, quick adventure. So. Thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.